there are actually several dozen network sniffing software tools out there. Far and away, the most common is Wireshark. Wireshark is the de facto attacker tool for network sniffing. And in fact, it's probably the most common legitimate network administration tool as well in this space. It's been around for quite a while. It's relatively stable. Uh, it's got a huge following. And it's actually the kind of technology that if you take the certified ethical hacker exam, if they're asking questions around sniffing the wire, they're probably asking Wireshark specific questions, questions on how to use it, how not to use it, and so forth. Wireshark actually adds a couple of different add-ons. It has a WinPCAP add-on for sniffing hardwired Ethernet connection, as well as AirPCAP for sniffing wireless network traffic, which you'll see in other videos. As I said, there's dozens of different tools. Probably my other favorite is Network Monitor, the Microsoft Network Monitor tool, because it's built into some versions of Windows. So actually, in a lot of cases, compromising a system, you don't have to load an additional Network Monitor on. It might already be there. Network Monitor might already be on the compromised Windows system. It's also relatively stable. Wireshark in certain versions has not been as stable as Network Monitor. The downside is Network Monitor is not quite as good about capturing a variety of traffic as Wireshark is, so it's really a personal preference thing. And there are many, many, many other tools. You should definitely take a look at the right tools that, that are right for you based on your use, based on your preference of interface, based on your preference of performance, and so forth. Generally speaking, though, I would start with Wireshark and get familiar with Wireshark. If you're not familiar with any network sniffing tool at this moment, download Wireshark and actually practice with it a little bit. And I'll show you how it looks in just a moment. A question that often comes up is how do these network sniffing tools remain passive? How do they stay out of the way of network intrusion detection and intrusion prevention systems? How do they stay away from tipping off administrators? And actually, the interesting thing here is in how a network interface card or a NIC works. A NIC that's connected to a network listens to all network traffic, and by default, it simply discards or ignores any traffic that it's not supposed to service, any traffic that's not destined for the upper-level protocol suite or operating system. It just throws away. Well, these network sniffing tools tell the NIC, hey, everything that you see is important to me. Send it all up, and that's how they work. And so they don't really change how the network card is connected to the wire. They just change what gets reported up from the network card. The network card was already seeing all of this traffic. It's now simply reporting it instead of discarding it. You may say to yourself, depending on your level of familiarity with current network technology, but my NIC doesn't see all of the traffic that's on the network. My NIC doesn't see traffic on that segment over there, or this segment over there. This is common in switch networks, which is most of the networks that are actually out there. It just depends on what kind of network, what protocol, and so forth. But on a typical switch network, only traffic for that segment is going to be available to the network card. So what sometimes we have to do as ethical hackers is fool the network either into giving us all of the traffic or break the switch or the router that's keeping traffic away from us. The most common technique that actually won't destroy anything or alert administrators to our presence is actually to figure out whether there are any mirror ports or span ports, which is essentially a port on a router or switch that sends all the traffic from one port to a different port. So, for example, if the target that I'm trying to listen in on is on port 8 and I'm on port 7, I want to tell the switch, hey, all that traffic for port 8, send it over to port 7, because I want to see it too. Some switches are easy to do with this. Some are actually nearly impossible to make happen like this. It depends on the switch. It depends on the vulnerabilities. Gets back to, in an earlier video, you saw how to footprint and enumerate and then identify weaknesses in switching hardware and in routers and so forth. That's exactly what you're looking for. One of the nice things to find is, oh, I can set up a mirrored port very easily. It makes your attack an awful lot easier. It makes sniffing a lot more possible. On some switches, you actually can uh, flood them with certain types of packets, certain crafted packets, 
in order to make them not really distinguish between packets going hither and yon and send all traffic to all ports for a very, very brief amount of time. That's uh, flooding, and that's actually a little bit more difficult as the switches and routers get more mature. This really only works on older devices or devices that haven't been updated in a while, unfortunately for us. But for the moment, let's just go ahead and, and talk a little bit more about the network sniffing on the segment that we're on. That's the easiest one to focus on before we actually branch out and look at other segments.